Hey Wastelanders, this is Gary from The Last Ranger and today's review is going to be covering the Revo Ness. So this is uh, on loan from me from the BPAX Pass Around Group and Suburban Tactical Nation lent me this knife. So if you haven't already please subscribe to his channel I appreciate him lending me this knife and I didn't know a lot about the Nesmuk design so it kind of made me research it a bit so I had to look up the history of the Nesmuk knife uh, for my brother uh, David C Anderson you all know him he 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 has his favorite the Nesmuk is his favorite outdoor style knife he loves this Revo knife sorry I'm in the park today so there's going to be some background noise <laughs> so I did a little bit of digging on my own for my own curiosity and it turns out the name of Nesmuk is a pen name for George Washington Sears. He was born in 1821 and he lived to 1890. So he used to write um, letters to the Force and Steam magazine under the pen name Nesmuk. And he wrote about camping, canoeing, and enjoying outdoors. And he preferred thin knives with keen edges and a usable length. I don't know that if this has that, but that's what I'm telling you. His Nesmuk was a fixed blade. He wrote of his disfavor for large, thick Bowie knives. I guess he didn't like Bowie knives. He highly favored a smaller knife design for efficiency. Yeah, the Nesmuk uh, is knife has been recently uh, gaining popularity. Uh, it's it's a great little knife, and for me, it's ergonomic shape and uh, deep belly. It make it a great slicer, especially for food preparation. No, you're not going to see food preparation in this review. But, yeah, I don't have any tomatoes. <laughs> and I didn't want to buy any. So, anyway. Uh, a little bit later, I'm going to cover out of, uh, cover the knife comparisons and the size and weight uh, at my home. So, I'm doing this after work and I didn't have a... a you know, I didn't want to lug a scale and a ruler around me with me, so I can cover the basics. Steel is D2 steel, it's a drop point, it's a flat grind, and a little bit, bit of lightly stone wash. Uh, this version has a carbon fiber scales, and I don't know, I don't know why people sometimes call this G10, but I. I'm pretty sure this is carbon fiber, fiber scales. Maybe it came in G10. I don't know. This is a it has a crimson standoffs. And believe it or not, there's just a there's just two standoffs in here and the pivot that holds this whole knife together. That's kind of cool if you ask me. Um, it has a liner lock. It's only tip tip up right side only carry and it's made in China oh and it's sprinkling it's starting to rain I may have to do this review of from my truck <laughs> uh, yeah I'm, I'm gonna move my review to the truck it's starting to rain hey wastelanders I'm back at home sticking this in the middle of the video but this is a 
some uh, knife comparisons and then I'll follow up with uh, some knife sizes or dimensions <laughs> and my cat's up here currently with me so he may show up and distract you guys from distract me he's he's right here can you see him <laughs> hey Paxton anyway let's uh, compare this uh, knife to the spider coat tenacious and let's compare it to Benchmade bug out and let's just for kicks and I'll this is a knife I carry in my bag every day this is the backup knife and you know so if I'm carrying a smaller knife I have a more of a tactical combat stabby knife that's always on hand it's in my bag and I I carry a shoulder bag and uh, I always have it every day wherever I'm at so this uh, I'll I'm only comparing it to not the size this is a knife that has jimping and it has a pretty small flipper tab but it's a great detent and it, but the detent is finely tuned so it's you have to yank it hard but it's not it doesn't leave your finger hurting so let's let's compare it to this knife because this is a bigger knife let's show some dimensions I'll have to adjust the camera down a little bit this has because it's a curvy blade it has a, you can see it it's a three and a half inch cutting edge but the blade itself it's just a hair over a three and a half because the, the blade curves so and let's do it overall mm, just under eight and a quarter maybe eight and three sixteenths and the handle the handle is four and a half inches so let's uh, get a weight on it all right 4.59 ounces yeah I I think I didn't mention failed to mention I would like if, if I had a in a, a dream world because this a, is a kind of ergonomic dream I would like this knife to have jimping along this top of the blade probably about here because I could see resting your finger on there to get some precision cuts and not having no jimping that it doesn't make for that and I would like some jimping cut into the steel liners and the carbon fiber or G10 themselves for your finger for your thumb but that would be a dream so I probably could do that myself with a Dremel but I don't own this knife <laughs> okay guys so I'm back <laughs> uh, I had to move uh, to the truck because it started raining I'm gonna go over some pros and cons of this knife starting with some pros I think this knife is an ergonomic dream knife I really like this I would describe the handle as like a kind of a pistol grip handle with a, this, this place you can put your trigger finger yeah I don't know if that's right but I would say it's like a pistol grip type uh, handle it's excellently priced at um, 
$66 and it has a really great lanyard hole and I I like lanyards holes like this that are on the side I don't like the hidden lanyard holes that are along the along the uh, spine of the knife that you see uh, a lot of uh, I don't know like like the elementum the the new knife the push button elementum they they gave a, a lanyard hole nested in the the along the spine of the knife and I don't like that kind of knife or kind of lanyard hole I mean it just carries better when you tie I don't know what is it called I would call that a vertical uh, format and a horizontal format anyway um, it's a true deep carry true deep carry recess screws countersunk screws and I th that clip size doesn't really bother me it, it carried well for me it just has a really great feeling I don't I don't feel the clip at all so um, it, it, it just I really like this uh, choking up on the the handle in the front of the blade I really think it's a secure way to hold a knife but the small flipper is kind of a pro and a kind of a con for the pro I like how it was designed it was small it, it keeps out of the way of the stuff in your pocket when you slide it in you're not gonna poke poke anything about with the in your pocket with this because it's so small anyway and the knife how it curves down it curves on curves like curves into itself so it keeps it out of the way so so let's go over the cons and I don't know if this is this is a con between exclusively exclusively to this knife but this has a super strong detent super strong I mean that's a good and a bad it's kind of like overly strong <laughs> and and if you don't get used to it I mean I've get excuse me my nose itches <laughs> pollen but it uh, my I've gotten used to it carrying it and uh, flipping it open but at the end of the day if I flip it open maybe 20 to 30 times my finger starts taking on a dent and it starts to like not hurt like I'm not a baby but just a little bit tender because this is a strong detent and so let's talk about the nether oh well, you know let's keep on the 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 flipper I think the flipper tab could use some jimping and if you haven't checked out stuff we do's website or channel check out his channel because he added jimping to this particular tab this particular knife he uh, he did a good job and he, he had a tor tutorial how he did it and everything this is a little hard to disengage I don't know this uh, if you can see that it pretty much is the same height as the cutout and this is could have been a little bit taller the liner because you have to really 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 press into there to get it to disengage and you sometimes can't um, get it to fully disengage unless you push it forward so um, I want to say this is a a fidget friendly knife but it really isn't you know because it you have to press so hard in there to get and disengage and you can't fully disengage it that's my only really my only negative about the knife let's not cut the knife down because I, I think it's a good knife uh, um this I'm done with the cons and pros I think this knife if I had to say it again, it's a ver uh, an ergonomic dream knife. It's really, really comfortable in the hand. Yeah, it's it's good for me, my hands. Maybe maybe smaller hands 
wouldn't think so, but my hands, it's fine. It's very thin blade and a very thin handle. It's probably a less than a half an inch handle. I like it. It seems like a, it would be a great slicer again for, uh, I don't know, food prep or cardboard or anything like that. I don't know if, I don't hunt, so I don't know if it's a good knife for hunting, but maybe. <laughs> um, yeah, I would just like to, it was a pleasure carrying this Thanks to Suburb Suburban Tactical, like that's a mouthful, STN, <laughs> for lending to me his knife, and I've really fully enjoyed it. Like, I'll say it again, if you uh, want to hit up STN, look for his uh, link in the description, and, and I'll ask you again hit up all the links under the under 1k wall and help beef up their numbers some people's numbers are like below 200 and I know you know I I have 500 subscribers man if 500 people would subscribe to everybody's channel everybody could be at 500 you know anyway thanks thanks guys and uh I hope you like my review. Take care, Wastelanders.